Hello ladies, I'm here with Dr. Helen Wiltshire uh, from True and we're discussing LARC, so long acting reversible contraception. Well, that's, that's right, a big one. <laughs> it is a mouthful, that's why we use LARC yeah, as a much shorter right. version. Yeah. Um, so we've had quite a few questions from the community, so we're going to go broad with our questions and then I think if we then go into specific type questions later on. So Helen, First of all, is um, one type of contraception any better than the other? Yes. There are contraceptives that are more effective at preventing pregnancy than others are. Yeah. So permanent methods like vasectomy and LARC methods like IUDs and rods are the most effective methods that we have. Yeah, okay. Um, so when you say LARC, does it mean if a contraceptive method is long acting and reversible? Yep. So long acting means that it requires the user to do something less than once a month. Oh, so sometimes okay. these methods are you know, set and forget. They can last for three or five or more years. Right. And reversible means that when you stop using the method, a woman's fertility returns to her normal level again. Mm, okay. So what are the main benefits of that? So the first benefit is that they're the very effective. So the chance of a pregnancy on one of these LARC methods is very, very low, mm. sometimes down to one in a thousand. Wow. Compared to something, you know, in typical use, somewhere between six and nine uh, per hundred on the pill. Okay, there you go. Um, Helen, we've all heard of the pill. Why isn't LARC better known? That's a good question. Um, mm. Because the methods are so effective, we would like to see more women using them so that they can plan their pregnancies for the time that suits them the best. Mm. Mm. I think the pill has been very popular over many years in Australia, yeah. and it's something that we all know and we're all familiar with, mm. and sometimes people just stay in their comfort zone with yeah. that. Yeah. Mm. Um, and what are the most popular types of LARC products? So the LARCs that we have are IUDs. There's IUDs with hormones and without hormones. There's oh. the Implanon rod that goes in the arm. Yep. And the Depo needle can also be used mm. uh, as a LARC method. They're actually often discussed on the Imperfect Mum. Mm. Yeah. Yep. So it's not really LARC versus the pill, but from your experience, why does someone choose one option over the other? So all the methods have got their benefits and risks and side effects. Mm. So, you know, ideally in consultation with her doctor or nurse, a woman can talk about what's important to her, yeah. um, what bene other, you know, other benefits or side effects she might be con particularly concerned about and choose the option that's right for her. Mm. And that's so important, isn't it? It is. It is very individual. We're lucky yeah. that we've got such a wide range of contraceptives to choose from now. Mm. So, um, okay, let's, let's get into specific um, concerns that women have. Um, first of all, how is uh, an IUD inserted and is it painful? That's really the top question I think yeah. that everyone asks. So I've got a couple of IUDs as demonstration ones. So a very popular option is the Marina. So that's a small T-shaped right. device. Okay. So they are fitted internally inside the womb, inside the uterus. Wow. And that does require a minor procedure. So it's a process that's just a little bit more involved than having a pap smear. Okay. So we still use a speculum so that we can see the yep. cervix. Yeah. Um, we use some cleaning solution. Check the distance inside the womb and then set this little plunger to the right depth. And then the IUD inside its applicator goes in through the cervix. The wings open up oh. and then it stays up at the top of wow. the womb. The applicator comes out and then we trim the threads just up in the top of the vagina. Yeah. Okay. So it's a very quick and simple procedure for people. So, so this is the, in, that's, the, that's the tool, but that's actually what gets left in there, that bit. Yes, bit. that's right. That just yep. that little red and green part okay. uh, is the part that stays with the woman. Yep. So it's not as big as it looks. That's right. The packaging yeah. is really big, but the device yep. itself is very Quite small. small. Yep. Yeah. So the implanons, that plastic device that goes in the skin oh, under okay. the upper arm. Yes, so yep. some people call it the bar or the rod. Yep. And that's a progesterone hormone contraceptive that lasts for three years at a time. So when it's fitted, it comes in a little applicator like this. It comes inside a needle. So to, to have that done, we'd put a little bit of local anaesthetic in the woman's arm to make that area numb. The needle slides in under the skin and then leaves the rod in place. So there's no stitches, just need a bandage on for about 24 hours afterwards. And again, that's three years of very, very effective contraception. Okay, and that's it there. So that's what would remain in under your skin? That's right. The real ones yeah. are white. Um, okay. Yeah, but that's exactly the same size and shape and feel as the real ones. So that little thing there actually produces? Yeah, it's got a slow-release membrane on the outside that wow. allows a small amount of hormone 
to diffuse out each day. So it's really very clever. It's amazing. It's probably the most effective really? method of reversible contraception that we have. Yep. Okay. Mm. I've, I've seen, uh, I've heard of some ladies, um, you can see, is that very rare that you can normally see it? I think you should be able to feel it but not really see yeah. it. Um, it needs to be fairly shallow so that it's easy to take out again when the three years is up. Yeah, yeah, that's important. <laughs> you want to be able to find it. <laughs> do these products have any effects on women's periods? Yes, they do, and that's one of the great benefits of the Marina IUS is that it tends to reduce period bleeding by up to 90%. Really? Yeah, so women might have very light yeah. or no periods at all while they're using it. Now, that is a benefit. <laughs> and now this might sound silly, but can you feel an IUD during sex? No, you shouldn't be able to. There are threads that come out through the cervix and just sit in the top of the vagina. Oh, okay. So with another sort of IUD, you know, there might be these soft nylon threads mm. sitting up at the top of the vagina. They're there so that a woman can check that the device is still in place wow. and so that it can be removed or changed over when that time comes. Um, but it shouldn't be a problem with sex. The threads are normally long enough so that they tuck around behind the cervix and that they stay out of the way. Okay. Are there any long-term side effects that women should be aware of using these products? So for most women, the long-term effects are, the, are beneficial effects. So reduced periods, reduced chance of anemia, mm. um, that confidence from knowing that they've got really reliable contraception so they're not going to get pregnant when they don't want to. Um, with the copper IUDs, there's a small chance for some women that their periods might be a bit heavier or a bit longer. Mm. Usually that's very manageable. Um, otherwise, long-term risks are, are very, very small and most people have only the benefits. Okay, well that's, that's great. And how long does it take for fertility to return if an IUD implanting rod is taken out? So the IUDs um, don't have an impact on a woman's ovulation. So once they're out of the body, her fertility returns essentially immediately and people can conceive within a few weeks of having them removed. That doesn't mean that it will happen straight yeah. away, but their fertility will return essentially immediately. Wow. With the implant on rod, the hormones come out of the system within about a week so that most people, again, will return to a normal cycle within three, four, five weeks afterwards. Okay, there are a couple of other more specific questions that women in the community um, ask. Okay, so um, if you get uh, the marina post-pregnancy, will it cause your period to return? And if you were exclusively breastfeeding, um, when do you think it should be fitted? So there's a lot of questions yeah, to cover is. in there. Yeah, there is, yeah. <laughs> and a lot of situations. Yep. So I guess the first thing is that these methods are, are great for contraception. Mm. And they can be safely fitted after having a baby anywhere from four weeks onwards. Mm -hmm. There is the potential that some of the risks are slightly higher in that early time frame, but for an individual woman, she needs to weigh that up with her doctor against mm. the risk of pregnancy versus the risk of those very small um, side effects that yep. might occur. And again, I suppose that goes back to checking with your GP and making sure you're having that one-on-one -on -one consultation with your GP because everyone is so different. That's right, yep. yeah. Yep. We know that for bleeding patterns, when women have a marina fitted, it is possible to get some irregular or annoying bleeding in the first three okay. or four, or sometimes up to six months. Yep. When women are exclusively breastfeeding, they're unlikely to get any periods returning, but they might get that bleeding with the marina that's not really a period. Okay. So again, it's an individual choice mm. for the woman and her doctor. Um, does she want that reliable contraception very early on? Yep because when she's just breastfeeding, there's a 2% chance of pregnancy mm -hmm. you know, with breastfeeding, mm -hmm. yeah, compared to less than a one in a thousand chance of pregnancy mm. with a marina. And is she prepared to, to trade that off against the chance of those very rare complications, which might be about two in a thousand, um, and the chance of some potentially light bleeding in those first few months. Yeah. So why is the needle not recommended for women with polycystic ovarian syndrome? The needle's got a relatively higher dose um, of hormone in it. Okay. And um, that higher dose of hormone can be linked with weight issues for some women. Ooh. And of course in PCOS that's already a concern for many of them. It's also one method that takes longer to come out of their system than say an implant on 
or an IUD. Okay. So if people are wanting a pregnancy, wanting to try for a pregnancy, um, it's harder to reverse yeah. the depot. Okay. Is there an effective contraception without hormones in it? There are. There's a number of options again. So the ones that we use in our practice are the LARCs. So we use the copper IUDs, so they've okay. got no hormones, but copper acts as their active ingredient. Oh. And then the other options for long-term contraception are permanent methods, like vasectomy or tubal ligation. And then barrier methods, like condoms or diaphragms, which overall have less efficacy, but many people find that they're very useful methods for them. We've seen in the media recently um, lots of coverage around um, the pill linking to depression. Um, what would you recommend for women who are concerned about this? So the first thing we'd recommend is if they're not wanting to get pregnant, that they stay on their pill for the time being. Yeah. Because of course the pill wears off immediately once women stop taking it and that they may be at risk of an unplanned pregnancy mm. when they stop their pill. Yeah. Okay. Certainly talk to their GP or women's health doctor about their other choices. Um, the pill may not be the only factor involved in mood but there certainly are lots of other low hormonal or no hormonal methods mm. that people can use. I think that's something that's really, really important for us to leave today with is that we really need to make sure we're getting our own individual consultations. That's right, because yeah. we are all individuals, everyone's different, mm. everyone's medical history or family situation or priorities are different. Yeah. So it's really worth having a detailed discussion with your GP yeah. about what's going to suit you the best. Yeah. Thank you. That was so good. I, I actually learnt a lot myself there and I'm sure you did too. Girls, let's keep this conversation going. Send in any questions that you have and uh, we can keep talking and make sure that you jump on to true.org.au and see what's happening over there as well and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Christine. Thank you.